this is a two-part video about um, Professor Tatsuhiko Kodama, the head of the Radioisotope Center at the University of Tokyo, testifying um, to, to the Japanese government um, in the lower house. And I thought this was a really good video. It's a two-part video, but I put it all in one. I'm just going to um, read the uh, captions for you. Um, they were hard to read until I figured out to go to settings, other settings, and put a black, black background behind it. It's a really good video, and it's by Tokyo Brown Tabby. He's the one who, um, or this is the person who did the captions for us so that we could see what was going on and I thought this was a really good a really good testimony that he gave in front of the Japanese government and the name of the two videos are um, Professor Kodamo angry about Japanese government's gross negligence I'm putting both parts in the same video and it's really good and if you like this video please go to Tokyo Brown Tabby and um, show your support and subscribe. This person just joined the 29th of July to put up these really good four videos and I'm going to do two of them for you. And <clears throat> uh, I really appreciate him doing this. So we'll get into the videos. Okay, this is um, a Professor Kodamo who is giving testimony at the Committee on Welfare and Labor <coughs> in Japan's House of Rep uh, Representatives, 9 a.m. July 27, 2011. <clears throat> He's angry about the Japanese government's gross negligence. Witness Kodama, please. I am Kodama, head of the Radioisotope Center at the University of Tokyo. I was astounded on March 15th. We at Tokyo University have 27 radioisotope centers and are responsible for radiation protection and decontamination. I am a physician myself and have been involved in decontamination work at facilities in Tokyo University Hospital for a few decades. We detected five microsieverts per hour um, radiation in Tokaimura in Ibara Ibaraki Prefecture about 9 a.m. on March 15th and notified the Ministry of Education and Science as the Article 10 notification as specified in the Nuclear Disaster Countermeasures Law. Later, the radiation exceeding 0.5 microsieverts an hour was detected in Tokyo. The level soon went down, and then on March 21st, it rained in Tokyo, and with the rain came 0.2 microsieverts hour per hour radiation, and this, I believe, is the reason for the elevated radiation level to this day. Chief Cabinet Secretary Adano said at that time, there is no immediate effect on health. I actually thought this was going to be a big, big problem. Why was I concerned? Because the current radiation damage prevention law is based on dealing with a small amount of radioactive materials that emit very high radiation. In this case, the total amount of radioactive materials is not much of an issue. What matters is how high the radiation is. However, in the case of Fukushima nuclear power plant accident, five microsieverts within a hundred kilometers radius, he is referring to Tokai Mura, 0.5 microsievert within 200 kilometer radius, referring to the Tokyo area, and, and the radiation extended far beyond, even to T's in Ashigara and Shizu, Shizuoko, I'm so sorry how I pronounce these, as everyone now knows. When we research the radiation injury sickness, we look at the total amount of radioactive materials. But there is no definite report from TEPCO or the Japanese government as to exactly how much radioactive materials have been released from Fukushima. So using our knowledge based at, at, knowledge base at the radioisotope center, we calculated based on the thermal output, it is 29.6 times the amount Sorry. 
29.6 times the amount released by the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima. In uranium equivalent, it is 20 Hiroshima, Hiroshima bombs. What is more frightening is that whereas the radiation from a nuclear bomb will decrease to 1,000th in one year, the radiation from a nuclear power plant will only decrease to one-tenth. In other words, we should recognize from the start that just like Chernobyl, Fukushima nuclear power plant has released radioactive materials equivalent in the amount to tens of nuclear bombs. And the resulting contamination is far worse than the contamination by a nuclear bomb. From a system's biological view viewpoint, if the total amount is small, you only have to consider a respective amount on each person. However, when a vast amount of radioactive materials is released, they are in particles. Dispersion of particles is nonlinear, and it's one of the most difficult calculations in the fluid dynamics. The nuclear fuel is like sands buried in the synthetic resin, but once the fuel melts down, a large amount of superfine particles is released. What happens then? The problem like the contaminated rice hay happens. For example, in Fujiwara, Ko, and Iwate Prefecture, rice hay with 57,000 becquerels per, per kilogram was found. Osaki and Miyagi Prefecture, 17,000 becquerels per kilogram. In Minami Soma City, in Fukushima Prefecture, 106,000 becquerels per kilogram. And in Shirakawa City, in Fukushima, 97,000 becquerels per kilogram. And Iwate, 64,000 becquerels per kilogram. Oh, Lord, everything. The pattern of contamination does not follow concentric circles. It depends on the weather. It also depends on where the particles landed, on the material that absorbs water, for example. We at the Radio Isotope Center have been helping Minami Soma City in the decontamination effort. We've done seven decontaminations so, so far. When we went to Minami Soma for the first time, there was only one Geiger counter. On March 19th, when the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries supposedly issued the notice on the cattle feed, food, water, and gasoline were about to be depleted in, in the city. The mayor of Minami Soma made a plea for help on the Internet, which is what was widely viewed. In that kind of situation, no one would look at a piece of paper from the ministry. No one would know. Farmers didn't know that rice hay was in danger. Still, they still they bought feed from abroad, paying hundreds of thousands of yen, and started to feed the cows with the feed from abroad with the same groundwater that they drank. So, what should we do now? We have to guarantee that the thorough radiation measurement is done in the contaminated area. As I said before, there was only one Geiger counter in Minami Soma City when we were there in May. <laughs> May, that's too much. In fact, there were 20 personal survey meters provided by the U.S. military, but no one at the city's Board of Education could understand the English manual until we went there and told them how to use it. As to the food inspection, there are more advanced survey meters than germanium counters, such as semiconductor imaging detectors. Why doesn't the Japanese government spend money in utilizing them? After three months, the government has done no such thing, and I am shaking with anger. Second, I have been in charge of antibody drugs at the cabinet office since Mr. Obuchi was the prime minister. since 1998. We put radioisotopes to antibody drugs to treat cancer. In other words, my job 
is to inject radioisotopes into human bodies. So my utmost concern is the internal radiation exposure and that is what I have been studying intensely. So I'd like to explain the mechanism of how the internal radiation exposure occurs. The biggest problem of internal radiation is cancer. How does cancer happen? Because radiation cuts DNA strands. As you know, DNA is a double helix. When it, when it is in a double helix, it is extremely stable. However, when a cell divides, the double helix becomes single strands, doubles and becomes four strands. This stage is the most vulnerable. Therefore, the fetuses and small children with cells that rapidly divide are more susceptible to radiation danger. Even for adults, there are cells that rapidly divide, such as hair, blood, blood cells, and intestinal epithelia. And they can be damaged by radiation. Let me give you an example of what we know about internal radiation exposure. One genetic mutation does not cause cancer. After the initial hit by radiation, it needs a different trigger for a cell to mutate into a cancer cell, which is called driver mutation or passenger mu mutation. For details, please refer to the attached document about the cases in Chernobyl and cesium. Alpha radiation is most famous. I, I was started when I learned of a professor. I was startled when I learned of a professor at, at Tokyo University who said it was safe to drink plutonium. <laughs> Alpha radiation is the most dangerous radiation. It causes thorotrast liver damage, as we liver specialists know very well. Internal radiation is frequently referred to as such and such millisieverts, but it is utterly meaningless. Iodine-131 goes to the thyroid gland and thyrotrast goes to the liver and cesium goes to urothelium and urinary bladder. I Iodine-131 goes to the thyroid gland a oh. whole body scan is utterly meaningless unless you look at these parts in the body where radiation accumulates. Thorotrast was a contrast medium used in Germany since 1890. It was used in Japan since 1930. And I have to go to part two. Thorotrast was a constant contrast medium used in Germany since 1890. It was used in Japan since 1930. But it was found that 25 to 30 percent of people developed liver cancer 20 to 30 years later. Why does it take so long before cancer develops? Thorotrast is an alpha radiation nuclide. Alpha radiation injures nearby cells and the DNA that is harmed most is a gene called P53. We now know, thanks to genome science, the entire sequence of human DNA. However, there are three million locations on the DNA that are different from person to person. So today it doesn't make sense at all to proceed as if all humans are the same. The basic principle should be the personalized medicine when we look at internal radiation, which which DNA is damaged and what kind of change is taking place. Which DNA is damaged and what kind of change is taking place. In the case of thorotrast, it is proven that P53 is damaged in the first stage and it takes 20 to 30 years for the second and third mutations to occur, causing liver cancer and leukemia. About iodine-131, as you know, iodine accumulates in thyroid gland, and that is most noticeable during the formative phase of thyroid gland, that is, in small children. 
However, when the first researcher in Ukraine was saying in 1991 there are an increasing number of thyroid cancers, researchers in Japan and the U.S. were public publishing articles in Nature magazine saying there is no causal relationship between the radiation and thyroid cancer. Huh. Why did they say that? Because there was no data prior to 1986. There was no statistical significance. The st statistical significance was finally noted 20 years later. Why? Because the peak that started in 1986 disappeared. So even without the data prior to 1986, the occurrence of thyroid cancer and radiation exposure from Chernobyl from Chernobyl had a causal relationship. Epidemi epi epidemiological proof is very difficult. It is impossible to prove until all the cases are done. Therefore, from the viewpoint of protecting our children, a completely different approach is required. <clears throat> Dr. Soji Fukushima from a national institution called Japan Bioassay Research Center, which researches health effects of chemical compounds, has been studying diseases involving urinary tracts since the Chernobyl accident. Dr. Fukushima and doctors in Ukraine study parts of bladders removed during more than 500 cases of prostatic hypertrophy surgery. They found out that in the highly contaminated area where six becquerel liter was detected in urine, there was a high frequency of mutation of P53, though six becquerel may sound minuscule. They also noticed many cases of proliferative precancerous conditions, which we assume was due to the activation of P38 MAP kinase and the signal called NF-kappa leading inevitably to proliferative cystitis with carcinoma in situ occurring with considerable frequency. Knowing this, I was astounded to hear the report that 2 to 13 becquerel liters of radioactive cesium was detected from breast milk of seven mothers in Fukushima. We at the Radio Radioisotope Center of Tokyo University have been helping to decontaminate Minami Soma City, sending about four people at a time and doing decontamination work for the length of 700 kilometers per week. Again, what's happening to Minami Soma clearly shows that 20 or 30 kilometer radius from the nuke plant doesn't make any sense at all. You have to measure in more detail, like measuring each nursery school. Actually, in Minami Soma, the center of the city is located near the ocean, and 70% of the schools have relatively low level of radiation. Yet children are forced to get on the school buses to go all the way to schools near uh, Itate Mira, where radiation is higher, spending 1 million yen every day for the busing. I strongly demand that this situation be terminated as soon as possible. What's most problematic is the government's policy that they will compensate the residents for the moving cost only if the areas are designated as official evacuation zones. In a recent committee held at the House of Counselors, the Upper House, then President Shimizu of TEPCO and Mr. Kaida, Minister of Econo Econ Economy, Trade and Industry, answered that way. I ask you to separate the two immediately, compensation criteria issue and children's safety issue. I strongly ask you to do whatever you can to protect children. Another thing is, what I strongly feel when I'm doing the decontamination work in Fukushima is that emergency decontamination and permanent decontamination should be dealt with separately.
We've been doing a lot of emergency decontamination work. For example, if you look at this diagram, you will notice at the bottom of this slide is where small children put their hands on. Every time the rain streamed down the slide, more radioactive materials accumulate. Mm. There can, the slide is where they put their hands and more radioactive materials accumulate every time it rains. There can be a difference in radiation level between the right side and the left side. If such difference occurs and if the average radiation of the slide is one microsievert, sorry, then one side can measure as high as 10 microsieverts. We should do more emergency decontamination work in such places. Yes, playground. The ground right under the roof gutter is also where children frequently put their hands on. If you use high pressure washer, you can reduce the radiation level from 2 microsieverts to 0.5 microsieverts. Good job. However, it is, 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 it is extremely difficult to lower the level to less than 0.5 microsieverts because everything is contaminated. Buildings, trees, whole areas. You can lower radiation dose of one place, but very difficult to do that for the whole area. Then how much will it cost when you seriously do the decontamination work? In case of Itai Itai disease, I don't know how to say that, caused by cadmium poisoning, to decontaminate half of cadmium contaminated area of roughly 3,000 hectares, the government has spent 800 billion yen so far. How much money will be needed if we have to decontaminate the area a thousand times as big? So I'd like to make four urgent requests. He only got three of them. First, I request that the Japanese government, as a national policy, innovate the way to measure radiation of food, soil, and water through using Japan's state-of-the-art technology, such as semiconductor imaging detectors. You go. You go, Professor. This is absolutely within Japan's current technological capability. Second, I request that the government enact a new law as soon as possible in order to reduce children's radiation exposure. Right now, what I'm doing is all illegal. The current radiation damage prevention laws specifies the amount of radiation and the types of radionuclides that each institution can handle. Now Tokyo University is mobilizing its workforce and its 27 radioisotope centers to help decontaminate Minami Soma City, but many of the centers don't have a permission to handle cesium. It's illegal to transport it by cars. However, we cannot leave highly radioactive materials to mothers and teachers there, so we put them all in drums and bring them back to Tokyo. The Diet is to blame for leaving such situations as they are. There are many institutions in Japan, such as radioisotope centers at national universities, which have germanium detectors and other state-of-the-art detectors. But how can we, as the nation, protect our children if these institutions' hands are tied? This is the result of the gross negligence by the Diet. That's the government. Third, I request that the government, as a national policy, mobilize technological power of the private sector in order to decontaminate the soil. There are many companies with expertise of radiation decontamination. Chemical companies such as Torre and Curita, decontamination companies such as Geoda, Technol and Atox, and construction companies such as Takanada Corporation. It will take tens of trillions of yen to do the decontamination work. 
I am gravely concerned that it might become public works project involving concessions. We don't have the luxury to spare a single second considering the financial condition of the Japanese government. We must figure out how we, how we really do the decontamination work. What on earth is the Diet doing when 70,000 people are forced out of their homes and wandering? Whew. That was pretty good.